Hello everyone, today I'll be helping you run a simulation on a PAM fuel cell model using MATLAB software. Now the fuel cell that I will be using is that of the NetStack PS6. Therefore it may be beneficial before running the simulation to know both how a fuel cell operates as well as the operating parameters of a NetStack PS6 so you can follow along with this video. Another beneficial tip is to keep the code and the model of the simulation all in one folder that way that the simulation runs smoothly. Go ahead and double click the PAM fuel cell code run first. Upon doing so you'll be prompted with this interface. For you if you're running the simulation for the first time the command window and the workspace will mostly be blank and you will go ahead and hit run. After a second or two, it doesn't take too long, you'll be prompted with this nice little schematic. It's a little messy, but for the most part, you will not be touching anything except this upper left and these lower three steps. These middle steps are simply the flows of the fuel cell as it, after the reaction has occurred, so you can think of it as its outputs. Now in this upper hand, upper left corner, it would be the mass flow rate of the hydrogen. And then in the lower left, you can see the mass flow rate of oxygen, nitrogen, and water vapor. This may be a little confusing, but this is just the mass flow rate of air, which is, you know, the cathode side, but broken up into three different components. To do so, we just looked at the uh, composition of air and then multiply the oxygen, or for example, the oxygen is 21% of air. So we would multiply 0.21 times the flow rate of air. Now, another key thing to note, since I believe we are dealing with mostly beginners, we want to keep the step time equal to the stop time that we will be running simulation, as well as keeping the initial value and the final value the same. This means that essentially we will not be running two different simulations for every run. We'll just be running one and recording one value every run. Uh, this may be a little confusing, but I'll try my best to explain later. Once you've set your parameters, by the way, it may be best to look at the design parameters of the net stack. Uh, I suggest starting at the maximum consumption or the maximum operating flow rate for both the air and the hydrogen and then working downwards. If you don't, I will show you exactly what kind of air you will get and then how you can fix it. Once you are done, go ahead and run your simulation. After a while, in the lower left corner, it will say ready. You can move to the right. In this upper corner right here, not necessarily upper, but upper middle. You can see the pressure drop of the hydrogen, double click it. And you can see the value of the pressure drop across the anode side of, you, of the fuel cell in Pascals. It's a very small value, but that's to be expected. Go ahead and scroll down. You'll see the pressure drop of the air side. Same thing. Go to the right, you'll see the temperature. Now when you're recording values, this right corner may not be there. To get there, simply hit the ruler sign, the second option, signal statistics, you'll see the max temperature in Kelvin, the minimum temperature in Kelvin, and the mean temperature in Kelvin during this 10 second simulation. You can exit out of that. Now for this scope one, you see that there's four different values that are being displayed. Um, the only one that you will really be looking at will be the, this bottom one, which is stack efficiency. 
once again, this right side may not be there. So go ahead and hit ruler, second option, which is signal statistics. Underneath trade selection, hit the drop bar menu. Go ahead and select stack efficiency and it will tell you the max, the min, and the mean. For whatever reason, if you wanna know the efficiency at a certain time, you can do that as well. Just go ahead and right click, select the first option, which is the ruler. You will see cushion management, or measurements, I apologize. And you will see T1 and T2. You can change these values. For example, you can just change this to one second and it will change your boundaries and tell you the specific stack of C at that time. After doing this, you're gonna want to go ahead and change your values for both uh, mass flow rate of hydrogen as well as the mass flow rate of air. For that, I've already done so. Let's run the simulation again. After it's done running, you can now compare. Everything should be very much the same from here on out, unless you put the values too low and I'll show you exactly what happens when it's too low. If you run the simulation too low, uh, below what is recommended, you will get very abrupt changes in your data and you will not be able to use it for your lab. Go ahead, scope one, and you see that it's a complete mess. If you see it's a complete mess, go ahead and erase everything you have and start over. Uh, basically, this just means that either the air rate or the hydrogen rate is too low and it's not enough for the fuel cell to run at our assumptions, you know, steady state. So after running the simulation, I suggest going ahead and exporting these values to, uh, for example, let's go ahead and say temperature. Let's go to signal statistics, whatever your results or hypothesis may be. Go ahead and export this to Excel. And then from Excel, you can either create a graph or plot using Excel, you know, the Excel software, or you can export the values back into an individual MATLAB code. The reason why I say this is because if you try to run the, or create a graph or plot using the same uh, script as that of the code, you may cause an error and it may, uh, you know, just waste your time. So I suggest not doing that. Go ahead and export the data into Excel and then deciding afterwards whether you want to use uh, Excel or MATLAB to create your graph. Doesn't really matter as long as it's nice and neat. Um, besides that, that's basically everything. I hope that I was helpful in my guide. That's basically it. Bye.